And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the providence are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. Verse 4, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And out of those two verses, we just want to tag today's sermon, responding to bad news. Responding to bad news. When you look at Nehemiah's response, Nehemiah doesn't go into depression text doesn't say that Nehemiah throws in the towel. He doesn't walk away. The Bible says that Nehemiah sat down and wept. And I need you to know that there's a difference between weeping and crying. You can cry and still be sophisticated. But when you weep, when you weep, when you weep, when you weep, weeping does something else. Weeping doesn't care what your hair looks like. Weeping doesn't mind that your makeup is running. Weeping doesn't care if you didn't kick off one shoe. When a child of God begins to weep, that means he's sick and he's tired. And weeping is for a breakthrough. There's somebody who needs deliverance. Nehemiah wept. He says he wept and fasted and prayed. And even though it's a bad report, watch how he responds to God. In verse 5, he begins to respond by giving adoration. He got a bad report, but he doesn't start complaining. He doesn't start out telling God how bad it is. He starts out by telling God who he is. In verse 5, he says, I pray, Lord, a uh, uh, God of heaven, O oh, great and awesome God. When you start your prayer out, you don't start your prayer out with complaining. You start your prayer out with telling God who he is. When you're going to start praying, you start giving God adoration. When you learn your relationship with God, you tell God who he is to you. You said, oh God, oh God of heaven, my Lord and Lord and my King of kings. Lord, you are the lily of the valley. You are the bright and morning star. God, you are Jehovah Jireh. God, you are Jehovah Shalom. When you start out praying, you start Start out by giving God adoration. You tell God who he is and how awesome he is and how you're going to magnify God. God is still God. Whether the gates burned down, whether the walls are falling down, whether you got bad report, did you know God is still God in spite of your bad news? He lifts God up. He elevates God. He magnifies God. He tells God who he is. He says as he starts off, oh great and awesome God, he starts off with adoration. Are you still a good God? Whether I'm broke, whether I got a lot, whether I'm hungry, whether I'm already ate God, you still good. He's teaching us how to respond to bad news because all it takes is one bad word and it'll take you away from what God trying to get you to. The first response to bad news is prayer and pray first. And when you start praying, you give God adoration. But then the next thing, he starts confessing. After he tells God who he is, he confesses in verse 6 who they are. He says, we are the children of Israel, which have sinned against you. He said, both my father's house and I have sinned. Then he continues in verse 7, saying, we have acted very corruptly against you. God already knows. He wants you to confess. I first got to give him adoration and tell him how good and how awesome he is in spite of the bad news. Next, what I need to do is start confessing. If you never confess anything in the midst of your prayer, then most likely you're full of yourself. Then when he goes from adoration to confession, he goes into thanksgiving. I give thanksgiving unto God. In verse 10, he reminds God that the folk in Jerusalem are his people. And he says that we want to thank you that we are still your people. We've been doing each other wrong. Ain't been doing each other right. And God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We didn't do right by you. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And really, we don't deserve what you give us. That's some stuff we got right now that we do not deserve from God because we ain't been all that. God didn't have to wake us up this morning. But my grace, yeah, and my mercy is sufficient for, because I love them so much. 
I'm going to wake him up and give him another chance. That's the kind of God we serve. He's thanking God. When you woke up this morning and decided to go to his house, you should have already been thankful. I should have entered into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. I didn't come to get thanksgiving. I came to bring thanksgiving because I woke up this morning and realized how thankful I ought to be. That's thanksgiving. Verse 11, he says, Lord, he said, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayers of your servants. He's making supplication. After he gives adoration, after he gives confession, and after he thanks God, he makes supplication for his neighbors, his friends, his family. The next thing you ought to move into is start praying for your neighbor. Start praying for your enemy. God is telling somebody in this room today the bad news that you receive. I've given you the steps on how to respond to bad news. Bad news is going to come. Keep living and you'll receive some bad news. What God wants us to do is stop reacting to bad news and teach us how to respond to bad news. He said in this world you'll have tribulation. But he said, the way you face the tribulation, he says, be of good cheer, for I've overcome all the tribulation you ever have to go I'm teaching you how to respond to the bad news that's coming. I'm getting you prepared so it won't take you out of here. It won't get you off focus. He won't take you to the side. He said, regardless of the bad news, you still need to stay focused.